here we're going to just kind of go through a bunch of views. We're starting to wind down our, our architectural project here. And I just want to add in some dimensions to our walls and on our different views. So let's just start by um, going to our top of footing. And inside of here, we've got our slab on gray. We don't really need any more dimensions because it's all based on our grid lines over here. So that one's okay. Um, in here, let's add some interior dimensions. So I'm going to say, okay, from this grid line, I'm going to go to center lines of my walls. If you don't want a center line, you can change this to say uh, wall center, core, whatever, dimensioning to whatever face you want um, of the wall. I'm going to leave it at center lines. Zoom down to there. Place it. Zoom out. And probably start that from the grid line, right? That's going to be different dimension to there, 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 and out to there. And then wiggle, wiggle, place it. Uh, dimension from this grid line to this wall center line, which we already know. Hover, click, see the blue line, and back to that grid line, click, escape, escape. Now, if after the fact you don't like where the dimension is, you can click on here and you can say edit witness line, but you can also, if you pick this dot, it'll move to the different faces of the wall, okay? This guy stretches it. This guy controls where it's going to be. Okay. So add some more dimensions from here to here. Cross. Some of these are a little bit redundant, but we'll put them in there anyway. And now we go this way. Remember, pick nothing when you want to place the dimension. Start here, center line, center line. That one's good. Here, center line, center line. Here to here to here. Maybe to there, to there, to there. Okay. And let's get these garage doors lined up properly. Yeah, it doesn't actually look too bad. Do some more dimensions from here to here to here. Notice it's snapping to the center lines and the grid lines. These ones I'm going to go to the outside of the curtain wall. Then to the center. Then back to the curtain wall. Panning as I go. Notice my dimensions are metric and imperial still. And continuing with my dimensions. Dimensions are pretty easy. Okay, there's an example I picked and I ended my dimension tool prematurely. So I'm going to press and drag and pull that guy out. Now I'm going to, once it's selected, I say edit witness line and that's it. I can carry on. Oh, um, let's go center line, center line. Again, you can go tab, tab, tab. Whenever you are dimensioning and you get near a wall or anything, use your tab button to select the different, cycle through the different um, dimensionable points of it. 
Okay, and again, dimension from here to here to here. Now, the nice thing is, I believe the windows up on the second floor are in the same place. So that means that I might be able to copy and paste these dimensions right up to my second floor. starting to look a little bit more like a real floor plan. Uh, let's do it. Let's grab this dimension and this string and this string and this string and let's grab, oops, using my control button. I'm going to grab all those dimensions using my control button. It looked like I got all the interior ones there. I believe I do. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Control C on the clip on the keyboard up to the top of second. And paste to current view. Revit's asking me to save. I'm not going to save right now. I'm going to just paste those up. And they stay blue as is. If I want to change the type or something, click out. Okay. And there's my second floor dimension. And notice that um, it's interesting that this dimension, because there's no door up here, uh, I've got another dead end corridor on my second floor. I need to pull this guy over. Escape. I need to take a door and say create similar and do this. And then I also need a room, create similar. Um, I'll, I'll just go back to my architectural and say room. And then you can see it's only one. I've made a new room, escape, escape. Pick on here, pick on here, S storage. And of course, that's going to show up in my room schedule automatically. I don't even have to think about going to check. And I can pick on here and say create similar and put a new tag in there. We know that door and that room are now automatically going to be added to my schedules. Now, on the second floor, hitting escape, escape. Let's change this to say find detail. I'm going to see a little more detail. Clicking on here. Uh, let's go to the main floor and copy and paste those, those stairwalls. Watch. Click and click. Control C copies it to the clipboard up to the top of the second. Paste to current view. There they are. Okay. And this I can stretch out and say, no, you are. Drag that right to there. Okay, I dragged it over. And another dimension from the center line of here to there to there. Top of main. I can I should have copy and pasted that, but I'll do it the old fashioned way. Hovering, click, click. And it looks like this room. Tag needs to go there, and I need to rename this and call it stair. Click out, escape, escape. Go back to my second floor. And I need to TR, trim this and this. Escape, add a door, click, create similar. Same thing, add a door, escape, escape on the keyboard. Grab my door tag, create similar. Click on here, escape, escape. So this is a new room. Let's add a room. Right there. Escape, escape. Pick on here and call that stair. Seems to me I noticed another room missing here. Architecture. Room. Yep, this needs a room here. Escape, escape. Click on here. Storage. And out. So, um, and again, all this is all 
being updated back here on our sheets with our floor plans, um, with our room schedules and our door schedules and everything else.